it's a, it's an exciting afternoon to 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 be here and those of you who uh, may have dog cussed me and a few others uh, uh, not not too long ago hopefully you're you're feeling a little better now but um, um, before I talk for just a moment about the future I want to say two two things about the past and number one I want to publicly um, thank Gary Smith for his tenure um, with Nashville SC both at the USL and then at MLS um, he did a lot of great things we had we had a lot of good success with Gary and, and thank him very much. And so please. I also want to give a quick shout out to uh, Rumba Munthali. I mean, jumping in as an interim is never an easy thing. Um, you know, we had some great early wins, not so good after, after that, but he handled it all with a grace, a dignity, uh, something I'm really proud of and, and grateful to him. And so thank you, thank you, Rumba. Uh, and also, as I, you know, now turning towards, towards the future, I also want to, you know, really a shout out to, the, to our staff, to our fans and supporters. You know, as, as we entered this uh, coach search, um, you know, we're, we're known not just um, nationally, but internationally now. Um, and, and people know about the energy and the excitement, um, the professionalism and, and, and talent in our club, on the field, in, 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 um, in our office, um, as well as I get asked all the time about our fans and the enthusiasm. And they're like, hey, did you create all that? I said, Absolutely not really. Um, it, they, they, you know, our, our fans and supporters created that. that. So I'm wondering about the, the, the feedback. Um, anyway, hopefully this is working now. Great. Um, so, so thank you to, to staff, fans, supporters, uh, everybody associated with, with Nashville SC. You've, uh, you've, you've, done us, you've done us proud. So we just listened to some to BJ. Um, and th thank goodness what I have to say about what we were looking for in a coach uh, is very consistent with what you just heard. You know, I would start with, um, you know, we were looking for, for somebody that was equally comfortable on the attack as well as on defense. Um, and I think we certainly heard that. And, and so we're excited about, about what, the, what that will be. Um, also, equally, uh, BJ mentioned development, and, and in this league, it's just super important to be able to develop um, kids from the academy to Huntsville and up into the first team. And yes, we will continue to acquire players in the open market, but, but we also um, need, if we want to aspire to silverware, and I certainly do, um, not silverware, but to silver, um, but uh, um, you know, being able to develop our own players is, a, is an important part of, of, of that mix. Um, I hope you got a sense of, of, of the leadership qualities that he has, just natural uh, leadership qualities. Um, he, he's got it, and, and, you know, you may have heard a little bit of it. We heard it from our players that have, that have played for him. When we mentioned this guy's name, they were like, yeah, this is a real deal. Um, and so made us feel good. And then finally, BJ mentioned common values, um, and that can be something people gloss over. I mean, I've just learned throughout my entire career how important um, having, having common values is. I mean, BJ mentioned collaboration. That is how we, we, we run the place. Um, and, you know, um, if, 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 you know, a, a coach that just wants to be left alone and, and, and not be collaborative with a general manager like Mike or a CEO like Ian is crazy uh, because they're not going to get um, um, all of what, they, what, what is there to be, be offered. And BJ didn't really mention this, but you know, what BJ ha has achieved, he's really earned it. I mean, you know, he is not an entitled person and, um, you know, I, entitlement's not something that I care for and, and I really appreciate um, a man uh, who's, who wants to work, who's humble, who's a we guy, not an I guy, and I think that's what, we, what we've gotten. Those were the things that really, you know, won, I think, not just me over, but, uh, but Mike and, and, and Ian, and, 
you know, at this point to say a little bit more about that, Mike, why don't you come forward? Thank you very much. Yeah. What an exciting day to be able to formally welcome B.J. Callahan as our head coach. It's an exciting moment for our club as we usher this new era in. We've talked affectionately uh, internally and in some regards externally about maybe like a 2.0, like a next step for our club, an ascension in what we're trying to do. And, you know, it's, it's hard not to get excited when you hear B.J. speak. And, you know, he talked about recognizing the past to understand, you know, the present uh, in the future, you know, in most cases, you, you don't know where you're going to go until you appreciate where you've come from. Uh, you know, the idea that the expectations for this club, as John mentioned, to pursue silverware, you know, our club is one of three in Major League Soccer history from an expansion standpoint who've gone to the playoffs in each of their first four seasons. Uh, you know, a club that's advanced in the playoffs, in U.S. Open Cup, and CONCACAF Champions Cup, uh, one of the few clubs in the modern era that have advanced in tournaments in each, in each of those three competitions in each of the last three years. You know, so the expectations for our club are very, very high. When I talk to general managers or chief soccer officers from other clubs, they all talk about our roster uh, and the expectations of such a solid collection of players uh, and their ability to ascend to heights maybe higher than where we are right now. So the idea of having someone take us into this next step in this process, uh, there could not have been a better fit uh, than B.J. Callahan. As I was telling people earlier in relation to, to the, the process of us looking at BJ, where maybe his star shone the brightest uh, last summer when he got into the U.S. national team as their head coach during Nations League and, and on into Gold Cup, you know, what I think very quickly as we looked at different coaches and, and different candidates, uh, the experiences that BJ has had, having already worked in our league at the Philadelphia Union, having worked in the academy, having worked with trying to transition top prospects through a second team in a different city, uh, very similar to we have in Huntsville, uh, to get a chance to work in MLS with an outstanding team, with an outstanding head coach in Jim Curtin, the idea of working with top young players, the experiences that BJ and that staff gave to, to now fixtures in our U.S. national team, like, like Brendan Aronson and Mark McKenzie, to do that as a coach and a coaching staff, you have to be brave. You have to be a risk taker. If you want to take chances. Uh, for us as a club, on and off the field, we want to be a group that is aggressive. Uh, BJ talks about a controlled aggression. I've been so appreciative listening to him talk to our players. Uh, it's very easy to want to adopt uh, the intensity, the enthusiasm, the energy he has when he talks about playing in the other team's half of the field on both sides of the ball, uh, being proactive and aggressive uh, and trying to put the other team under pressure. As he addressed our players and staff for the first time the other, the other day, what he talked about is that everything is built around scoring goals. We don't defend to try to, 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 concede, to not concede. We defend to try to create scoring chances. We try to play in the old team's half of the field. Uh, you know, when I get asked about how his team plays, you know, we got a chance to see some of that last summer with the U.S. national team. What you did see in some ways was this tremendous mentorship he received from guys like, like Jim Curtin in Philadelphia, whose teams have been so aggressive in making teams uncomfortable. We saw in coaches like Greg Berhalter, and even more so when he coached in Columbus, and how his teams were really able to dominate the ball. To me, you know, when I was asked about BJ and how he coaches and what we saw from the U.S. national team, I think you saw the best of both worlds when you saw the U.S. team play last summer. When I talked to players, not only guys like Walker Zimmerman, Shaq Moore, and our team, but even the likes of guys like, like Tyler Adams, they talked about the best version of U.S. soccer and what you saw in an era last summer under BJ's guidance. So we are so excited about having BJ here with us to think about what he offers to our club, not only on the field right now with our first team, potential opportunities it presents to our club, you know, through giving opportunities to young players, to helping players transition down our pro player pathway from Curry Ingram Academy with our youth academy, uh, through Huntsville City Football Club, into our first team. Uh, you know, our hope and expectation is that you've only seen a kind of a scratch in the surface what this group's capable of. And as we move into this next era, uh, I couldn't think of a better person to lead us into that to our new head coach, B.J. Callahan. Okay, that's enough of, of the nice stuff about me. Um, <laughs> so, but I, I want to start 
by just, you know, I, I, have a, I have to start by saying thank you, right? Thank you to Mr. Ingram, thank you to Ian, thank you to Mike. Um, as, a, as someone who's an assistant coach all the time, you need someone to take a chance on you. And so talking about being brave, uh, actions speak louder than words. And this club, Nashville, with the, with the, with the leadership um, at the top, they, they, they act brave. And by taking that chance, I thank you guys for, for, the, for that. Um, I also have to say thank you to the staff that's here at Nashville, um, both on the commercial side and the sporting side. Thank you specifically to Roomba for welcoming me in. But when I got here, the, the way that I was welcomed by this uh, staff and this club uh, it makes you feel really good, makes you feel like you belong right, in the, uh, right from the beginning. And I know how much hard work that they've put in uh, to, to get this club where it is. And there's a lot of really good work, and this club is in a really good place. Um, so that gives me confidence that when we talk about what we want to do in the future, that we're just working from a starting point of good and going to try to make it, make it better. Um, and then I have to you know, thank the players. I've had the opportunity to already be here for a couple of days working with them. Um, the, the, the openness, um, the welcomeness, uh, the willingness to try new things, the, uh, the take on uh, some of the challenges that we've challenged them with, uh, to, to be vulnerable uh, a little bit and make mistakes and, and not shy away from that, um, gives us all great confidence that, that this group is ready, prepared, and motivated to move forward. Um, and then the last thank you goes out to the city of Nashville and the fans. Uh, the, the, from afar, when you look out, it's easy to see the energy that's in the stadium. It's easy to see the, the, the passion in the city. Uh, but now that I'm living here, now that I'm around it, now that I had the opportunity to meet them and obviously be around everybody, it's, it's exceeded my expectations. Uh, so uh, thank you to all, to all those people. Um, uh, I'm already at work. Uh, I'm only going to continue to work harder. Uh, and the group uh, collectively is going to be a group that will represent the people of Nashville, the fans of Nashville, uh, and it'll be a group that you can be proud of each night that you come out and watch our team play. All right, we are going to transition into the Q&A. Please, uh, please raise your hand if you have a question, and then either Sean or MG will handle uh, a microphone. Uh, with that, What's it? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, PJ, welcome to Nashville, West Bowling Club and Country. I'll grab the mic. West Bowling Club and Country, welcome to, uh, to Music City. You mentioned that as a first-time head coach, it requires somebody, the club, taking a chance on you. What is it about the experience you've had or maybe the conversations that you had with Mike and leadership that you think convinced them to take that chance on you? I think right first and foremost, when you, have a, when you have a first meeting with somebody, you get a good first impression. And when I heard, the, when I heard about the vision and the values of, of Nashville and, and where they want to go, the commitment that Mr. Ingram has, the, the, the dream and the vision that he has to uh, make this team about Nashville, to be integrated in the city of Nashville, um, it, it, and then I look at myself and I see the values that I believe in and what I want to instill into a team, it, it becomes very clear very quickly um, that, that, it's a, that it's a right fit. And then you just continue to build from there and you continue to evaluate the club and you look at a playoff proven roster, great people, great facilities, um, a great city, a great fan base, a great stadium. And eventually you start to realize that there's just not really much that, that you need to be successful. Um, and so for me, I appreciate the opportunity um, and someone to take a risk on me and then from, you know, in return, uh, repay it. And I know that this is a great setup. And like I said, there's a ton of, ton of good here. And all we're going to do is try to work every day to get a little bit better, to make it good to better. BJ, uh, Ben Wright with Broadway Sports Media. Um, Mike kind of mentioned just the, the, the track record of success in Nashville, making the playoffs every year. Um, looking at the table now, they're obviously outside of the, the playoff spots, but still in the hunt for it. I'm, I'm just kind of curious, how do you... Um, maybe balance between short-term success this year and, and goals for this year while also kind of implementing your, your vision for the team and kind of longer-term success? And I guess are those things even mutually exclusive? You, you, you took what I was just about to say. They're both mutually exclusive. I've come in um, with, with the same conversations that we've had 
with about trying to create a clear identity for this team. The way we talk about identity is marrying our style of play that we want, how we play on the field with how we act on and off the field. And so the idea in the short term is to just continue to build that, set core values for the team, set expectations, set the standards, and train it hard every single day. And we look at the League's Cup window as an opportunity for us to really uh, bond together and go through some learning lessons and be challenged with each other uh, and continue to learn and continue to get better. We know the best way to do that is by playing as many games as possible and get challenged. So that's the, you know, sort of the, that's our short, short term objective. And then hopefully that we're, you know, we, we've taken those lessons, we've improved upon them, and we're ready to, you know, ready to resume the MLS season where we have nine games remaining. Five of those games are right next to the teams in our table. Uh, we, we, we can control everything that we want and all of the goals of this club are in our control. Uh, and from there, that's sort of like our group stage, okay? And, and what we're gonna do is earn our way in to hopefully, you know, the opportunity to play in the knockout stage, which is the MLS playoffs. And if we're able to do that in these first two phases, I, I have the most confidence in the group and collectively together, we're gonna be able to be a team that would be reckoned with if we can do that. BJ, uh, Valer Shavilla with Broadway Sports Media. Um, you said you already obviously been around the guys and, and been around the roster and, and see them practice a few times now. Are there any names that impressed you that you were maybe unfamiliar with coming into it? I mean, I, I would just say overall that I'm pretty impressed with the entire group. Um, the, the, the culture that these guys have built, uh, the connectedness and, and how they care for each other, uh, is, is really tremendous. The effort that they're putting in every day on the training field, the intensity that they're playing with, um, and that's not only just on the field, the, 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 all the extra work that goes into being a professional athlete and a high-performing team, uh, they're doing. And so for me, I've just been really impressed with the, you know, you know, the standard that they're working at um, and how open-minded they are to continue and want to learn and get better and how committed they are to sort of something that's bigger than themselves. And from, you know, I've been really, uh, I would say, impressed and encouraged uh, that, that of where our starting point is. BJ, um, two questions, one very quick. How's your Spanish? Uh, un poco. <laughs> I'm, just trying, I'm just trying to make my job easier. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, the last time you, uh, this is very interesting, the last time you faced Mexico in any way, shape, or form, you beat him in the Nations Cup as a head coach. This is the second time as a head coach that you're going to face him right away, on Wednesday. You already told us that you're at work. We know you're at work. How do you feel about facing Mexico for the, same time, for the second time as a head coach and try to beat him again? Yeah, I, I think the, the, the opportunity that we have in League's Cup is that we're gonna be challenged in many different ways, right? And the best way that we're looking at this and, 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 and we're welcoming the challenge is it's a team that we're pretty much unfamiliar with. Uh, we're familiarizing ourselves with it, but it's not like league play where you get to play the teams two or three times. So um, it's actually an awesome opportunity for the staff uh, to go through the entire process of preparing for a team, um, to familiarize our, our players with the opponent. And it's a, to have this as our first game to play in the League's Cup is actually a really welcome opportunity because we get to do every piece of preparation and we sort of get to evaluate, reflect and refine every one of our processes because the team that we're playing, at the starting point is that we have to learn everything about them. Yeah, uh, Jacob Shames out with the Tennessee and Mike. Um, I guess for, for BJ coming in at this point in the season, League's Cup, nine games to go in regular season, I guess, what would constitute a successful uh, first few months uh, here at Nashville for BJ? Look, our expectations are, are pretty clear from the standpoint of, you know, as BJ mentioned, we're wanting to advance kind of the knockout stages. You know, uh, we, we have a lot in our destiny from the standpoint of being able to play so many matches head-to-head. Uh, -head. We talk sometimes internally about those games are like, like six-point games because, you know, you can get three points, but you can also take three points from opponents also. So, you know, we're in a great situation from that standpoint, but, you know, uh, I also don't want to, to box BJ, our players, our staff in a corner by, by simply, uh, you know, limiting the scope of our success by a single tournament like Leeds Cup, by five, nine, ten games regular season. You know, for us, you know, you know, BJ said it earlier, I mean, this group has been all about sustained success. You know, the consistency we've had year after year, you know, there's only so many teams been able to do that, you know, consistently in league history. 
You know, so for us, we want to be in a situation where we're always, as John Ingram said earlier, positioned to pursue silverware. So, you know, when we start our season, we always talk about, you know, we look at the playoff really, and, you know, BJ's described it appropriately as like a tournament, you know, and we kind of think if we're, we can always put our team around the line, you know, for the playoffs, then it's up to the players and coaches to put us in a position to get into the tournament. And once you get in the tournament, you know, BJ is probably a knockout stage, it really is kind of like anything goes because so often when you're playing a one-off match, it can be a flip of a coin and without cliches like any given Sunday. I mean, you know, the reality is like on the day when you're playing a one-off match, anything kind of happens. So, you know, I like the fact that if I was going to, you know, benchmark our group, I think, you know, BJ being able to continue to consistently put them in position to pursue postseason opportunities. And whether we get there or not, time will tell. But you know, I, I like the idea that we're already in striking distance right now, and I think he's got a tremendous opportunity in front of himself. Hey, BJ, uh, John Glennon, Nashville Post. Um, I'm sure you've seen plenty of, of Hani Mukhtar on, on, on clips or, or you know, in, in games, uh, personal as well. Uh, um, what, he's a guy that certainly carried this team for a couple of years. Things haven't been as productive this year. Is that one of the top priorities, do you think, as, as you come in, finding a way to, to kind of bring Hani back to a level that a lot of people are more familiar with? And, and if, if so, or you know, maybe broad strokes, how are some ways that, that can be accomplished, do you think? It, it, it's no secret that Hani is a key player for us. Um, and like you said, through, through our Nashville style of play, it's one that we want to create goal-scoring opportunities from all phases of play. So it's our job as coaches to put our players in positions to score goals. But overarching, what we're all about is the collective. We're not about one player. Um, and so the idea is that we forge an entire group together that is connected and collective, and we will all shine, right? We will all have opportunities to play big moments in matches, and the, and the, the intent is to get Hani in goal-scoring opportunities, just like it is to get every one of our guys, because at the end of the day, we don't, we're not about who scores the goal and who gets the assist. It's that Nashville wins the game, and Nashville moves on, and Nashville continues to you know, move forward here. Hi, BJ. Jill Jelnick, sports director, Fox 17. Congratulations. Nice to meet you. you. A little bit on top of your previous answer, you mentioned style of play, creating more goal-scoring opportunities. Can you elaborate a little bit more about specifically your style of play, what you're bringing, and how it might be different than the style of play from years past? Yeah, so the, the, our style of play at Nashville is going to be one that I think Mike mentions is what we call sort of controlled aggression. So when we're with the ball... We want to be a team that, you know, unbalances, disorganizes the opponent in the opportunity to be able to play forward, dictate the tempo, play free, and create goal scoring opportunities. And at the same time, when we're without the ball, we want to be a team that's dominant. We want to be a team that's pressing the opponent into mistakes so that we can create goal scoring opportunities. We want to be a team that's together, um, that's collective and connected, and is everyone's attacking and everyone's uh, defending. So I think that you know, it's a team that you, you, you'll see that every player is going to have clear roles and responsibilities. Um, you know, we want to simplify this complex game for them and in an effort to give them the confidence to go out and perform and, and, and you know, win games and, and, and pursue postseason play. And in the, pursuing postseason play is to pursue the silverware. BJ Lucas Panzica, 104.5 The Zone, the club's radio partner. Club's already announced the first signing of the BJ Callahan era and Patrick Yazbek, the Australian midfielder. I guess for both of you, firstly, Mike, how much was the intention behind that signing to fit what BJ wants to do in terms of Patrick's skill set? And then BJ, just what's it been like to work with Patrick and what excites you about what he can bring to your midfield? Well, uh, you know, it really helped to go through the interview process while we were trying to finalize terms for Patrick and to make sure that, you know, that it was someone that BJ felt fit into what he was looking to do on and off the ball, offensively and defensively. You know, for us, when you see what Patrick provides, I think he really gives us what we're missing in midfield, but also I think what, what maybe BJ is going to add to this group as far as some of the things he does on both sides of the ball. So, you know, always try to kind of under-promise, maybe, you know, and take pressure off somebody, and hopefully they over-deliver. He's obviously a young kid, you know, and, you know, there's an adaptation period for any new player to our league, and especially from a different country. But for someone at his age to have the experience he already has, you know, BJ's had a chance to work in the last couple of days. Uh, I've been really impressed with uh, just his maturity for someone, how young he is, and how he handles himself on the field. Yeah, I... I think it starts with that Patrick's just a really great guy um, to start with, and, it, and he fits right in with the group, right into the locker room, because we're, we're a group that's, you know, I think uh, 
lives with a bit of humility and then at the same time have a, has a little bit of hunger. And you can see that when you talk with Patrick. He, he's, a, he's, a, he's a guy who's motivated, has big ambitions. Um, it's never easy to transition into a new country, into a new culture, and into a new league. So we're going to do everything that we can to smooth that transition process for him. Um, and again, he, he, for me, he's been, a, he's been a really great addition to, to the group and to the locker room. Um, and on the field, he, he has really good quality. And we're gonna, he's going to make the players around him better. And at the same time, the guys that we have on the field right now uh, and in the group is going to allow him to shine and have his best attributes come forward. Uh, Will Bowling with 104.5 The Zone. BJ, for you last summer with the national team, what did you learn about yourself as a coach through that tournament and through that process, the Nations League? And, and Mike, for you, what are some of the qualities in that U.S. team last summer that you feel like you value moving forward in this national team? So I, mean, I had a unique situation when I was asked to be the interim coach was that um, – I was already going to go coach people that I knew and, and that I had really good relationships with and people that I've spent long hours with together, staff and players, over the, you know, the four previous years. Uh, so the unique situation was that I was just going to be taking on a different role. Um, so the first thing that I sort of reflected on after that experience of what I learned about myself was like, y y you have to be authentic. You have to, the, the BJ Callahan that they knew as the assistant coach, now that he was just in a different role, was going to be the same B.J. Callahan. And it's the same thing that we talk about with our guys here, is that we're all going to have different roles on the team, different roles and responsibilities, but our status is going to be the exact same. And so for me, that was a really great learning lesson when I went to work with people um, and, and, you know, a, a lot of people that put a lot of hard work in, players and staff, to make that opportunity successful. And, you know, I'm grateful that we had that moment, but that was a collective moment that, you know, now I clearly had a, a, an, a, an opportunity, but it's a perfect example of when there's a lot of team success, individual success comes after, not the other way around. You know, b before I watched uh, BJ on the touchline, coaching the U.S. team, when they made the appointment, my first thought was that, you know, BJ's been a head coach all along. He just hadn't gotten an opportunity to do so. You know, uh, so I think it was a super appropriate, uh, you know, uh, position for him to, to assume. Uh, and you saw the way he handled himself, you know, Claudia mentioned earlier, it's, it's obviously not an, an easy situation to come into, to have to, to not only coach in Nations League, but take on the likes of Mexico, uh, to see how he handled himself uh, with dignity, grace, uh, you know, the adversity of having to walk a situation like that. Uh, I think you saw someone who was cool and composed under crisis. And I think when you see that, you can appreciate the fact of how that might, you know, to assimilate himself into working in a domestic game and working with us. Uh, you know, the fact that would seen him previously, you know, albeit as an assistant coach in MLS, kind of felt the things he did would, as, would assimilate quickly into the domestic game in our league. To watch his team play, you know, the reality is that he, I've already seen that and how he's talked to our players the first day he spoke to them, the things they do in training. Everything they're doing is about trying to face forward and try to get in behind and try to put the other team under pressure. I love about the things that BJ does, and again, you saw it with the U.S. team this past summer, and I've already seen it in a very small sample size and training. Uh, BJ's teams are all about making the other team uncomfortable. Uh, I think to be able to do that, we talk a lot about defensively, can make the other team face their own goal. You know, offensively, can you try to find space in behind? And I think that the fact that his teams create scoring chances, they do it off defense, they do it through patterns of play and build up also, I think his teams are really, really fun to watch. Buenas tardes, Ernesto Ortega para Extrema Tennessee. Profesor, eh, afortunadamente eh, el torneo ha llegado a una pausa. El equipo todavía está en, en posiciones para avanzar a playoff. ¿Qué tanto le va a ayudar jugar la League Cup para conocer a sus jugadores, ayudarlos a cambiar el chip y aumentar la posibilidad de mejorar en el aspecto eh, mental, físico y colectivo? Gracias. Coach, what are you doing to change the chip of the players to change that mentality and, and try to move forward into a more positive dynamic uh, as we go into the next, uh, the final uh, part of the season? Yeah, the, the only thing that we're changing is that we're trying to build our national identity. And with, with that is we're going to challenge, you know, we're challenging the entire group um, to be brave, uh, to, to be um, intense, at all moments, uh, and also to, to not be afraid to make mistakes. Um, every opportunity that we make a mistake is an opportunity for us to, to learn, to reflect, and refine. 
And so for us, it's just about continuing to give them that support, um, that clarity on what their roles, roles to do in each of the situations and all the phases of play. And I think when you're able to train in sort of a spe specific way and you're able to provide clarity to the player, that equals confidence. And at the end of the day, we want a confident group to walk on that field and go execute. Nick, <clears throat> Nick Frazier, 102.5 The Game. BJ, welcome to Nashville. Uh, you know, this team last year in the League's Cup had great success reaching the final, obviously not winning it, but reaching the final. Uh, do you feel a little extra pressure coming into the timing of, your, of the signing of bringing as a head coach to have a little extra pressure into the League's Cup to produce, I guess, for the club and the fans? There's already enough pressure being the head coach. League's <laughs> Cup doesn't make it anymore. Um, but what I can tell you is what I said before. We're, we're focused on really creating a, you know, building on the, the good that's here to make it better, the sustained success that's already here, we wanna build on that. And part of building on that is to continue to evolve this identity, the, the Nashville playing way, on how we play on the field, how we act on and off the field. And that beginning part starts, has already started on the training field, and obviously our first test is gonna be the League's Cup match. And from there, we'll be able to continue to stick to our, our process. We'll review it, we'll reflect it on it, we'll refine it, and we're gonna to continue to do it. And the whole goal through League's Cup is to play as many matches as we can to give us as many learning opportunities so that when we transition to the next phase is the end of League's Cup to the beginning of MLS, we're, we're trying to be the best, the best Nashville team that we can be at that time. And the final question comes from our very own reporter, Ayla. Um, how do you make all of the players happy when you can only pick 11? <laughs> That's a great question, Coach. <laughs> you just had to ask me the hardest question <laughs> of the entire press conference. That's a bright future, bright future. How do we make the players happy when I can only pick 11? Because what we want them to do is to learn that they are playing for something bigger than themselves. And so, and we have a thing that we say, be a good person and be a good teammate, right? And so when they know that they're playing for somebody bigger than themselves, which is for the city of Nashville and for, NS, for NSC and the badge that they wear, they understand that it's okay. Sometimes you don't get your way, um, but it's for the good of the group. And, we're, and then you become a good teammate and you push the 11 that are gonna go on that field that day and you're gonna wait for your moment and you're gonna go out, you're gonna work hard and you're gonna earn it. And when you earn your moment, you seize it and you take your opportunity and you never know what can happen from there. Thanks for the question. Thank you, everybody. We are now going to transition to the photo opportunity. We, it's going to take us just a couple minutes to move the table, so hand there with us. Uh, Mr. <laughs>